Discharge Superheat is a tool to be used to diagnose system problems. Never use this method to charge a system. Discharge temperature on most compressors is limited to 225 degrees. Temperatures above 225 degrees will cause worn rings, damaged scrolls, and acid formation. The temperature is usually 50 to 70 degrees hotter inside the compressor. At 350 degrees, oil will break down and will vaporize. There is a general rule of thumb across the industry for the minimum and maximum discharge superheat range. The minimum superheat is usually recognized as 50 degrees and the maximum superheat is recognized as 90 degrees. As long as our compressor is operating within this range, we acknowledge that the compressor is within its operating envelope. On new inverter communicating systems, we have a discharge pressure transducer and a discharge temperature thermistor that are a few inches off of the compressor on the discharge line. With these two numbers, the system calculates the discharge superheat. This information can be seen on the refrigeration system info, shown to us either on the UI or on the tech app. The suction pressure and suction temperature is red, which gives us our suction superheat, and the discharge pressure and discharge temperature is red, which gives us our discharge superheat. So what does our discharge superheat reading give us? Well, at startup, the equipment ramps up to about 2,700 RPM on the compressor. The inverter and the PCM monitor the discharge superheat and waits for it to stabilize before responding to compressor RPM commands to meet the load and the UI demands. This algorithm is to ensure that the compressor is operating within its safe operating envelope before increasing speed. Before taking readings such as your discharge superheat, let the system stabilize. Run the system for at least 15 minutes before taking any readings. 30 minutes is better with R410A. We can also use our discharge superheat to diagnose system problems. If our superheat is 50 degrees or less, we may have liquid refrigerant flooding back to the compressor. We may also have low airflow caused by a dirty filter, restricted airflow, or zoning issues. We could also have a refrigerant charge condition where the system may be overcharged. And we could also have a TXV that is not metering correctly. On the other side of the scale, if our discharge superheat is above 90 degrees, we may have a low refrigerant charge, we may have a TXV that is not metering correctly. We may have electrical issues that is causing high winding temperatures in the compressor. So we would need to check our voltage and our amp draw. It could also be caused by a dirty condenser coil where we're not exchanging the proper amount of air. It could also be recirculation of condenser air if the outdoor unit is located under a deck or under an overhang is recirculating the condenser air. It could also be a restriction in the refrigeration system. We could be starving the coil of refrigerant. And then it could also be an actual load that is too large for the system. So as we said before, the discharge superheat number is a tool to be used to diagnose system problems. But remember, Never use this method to charge a system. Go to arefco.com for more videos. Like, subscribe, and check back every week for new videos.